For each body part that you make, you'll need a new layer to do it on. The reason for that is when you go to rig, the leg is going to be in front of the body, the leg will be in front of the body, the tail is going to be behind them both, and you'll set the number and the order in which they appear. So if you just do them on the same layer, you're not going to get anywhere. Let's do the leg now. So this layer I've had open that's probably been driving you all crazy. I'm going to call, ooh, let's not call that leg, let's call that back leg. you got to be pretty persistent with naming correctly. And if you have a question of, do we do all four legs, the answer is yes and no, it depends what you want. You can do just one leg, like this. Wow, that came out really good for just a random line I wasn't planning on doing correctly. Yep, for the life of me, it can't happen again the way it just happened. That's not too bad. You're not getting the defined lines here. Like, that's pretty good. I'll keep it. I can live with that. Anyway. When animals actually extend and move their feet, the appearance changes. So if you have both feet that look like this, when the feet, foot comes forward, it's still going to look like this. Whereas if this is a left or right leg, the farthest one away, this one over here, that one, it should look like this foot right here. And we can get around that. This is what is going to separate you from the other artists, especially if you're looking for a job or if you're looking for quality in your own games. We might extend this tutorial farther to do mesh swapping. So not only will we have dynamic bones, we'll have a foot that when it comes forward, will swap to a brand new mesh. So it starts like this foot and it comes out and right in the middle of the animation, it swaps to this one. So it'll turn its foot around, or we can even custom draw some of the frames to get this look. So it'll actually turn its foot as it pushes forward. But for the sake of simplicity, we're first just going to do the legs copied. So we'll start with this one and the back leg. We'll duplicate them and move them to the back and call it good. And then we'll test that in the game. And after we've done that, I will make one more video where we go back and we do mesh swapping to get just perfect feet. True realism, even in 2D. If you're going to be a 2D artist, you might as well be the best at it. Or, you know, good enough for your own games. You only have to please you at the end of the day. <sighs> might have to zoom in for this one. These straight up and down lines are terribly, terribly tricky. There we are. Just got to learn which way to push the hand. And sometimes on these really small movements, the brush stabilizer will actually hold you back. On the back of the foot, you do want to define the rounded curves. When you actually go to rig it, you're going to have a bone here, a bone here, and a bone here, a bone here. And that's why you want these balls of the feet, because they're going to pinch and deform. If they're rounded enough, it won't look like this. It'll look like a foot that's doing this. And with the foot here, this, how you do the feet, is going to be completely determined by your art style. Are you going to color the lines? If so, are you going to color them just a slightly darker shade? Or are you going to blend them in for really realism? Or are you just going to kind of paint all the details yourself, little by little? If you're going to paint it all in, you don't have to really do each toe. They're not going to deform. I mean, it's 2D. If it was 3D, you'd have a bone in each one. But we're on 2D right now, so... If you want claws that extend and contract, you will put those on another layer. if you want to get more artistic, you could push the foot into a shape like this and really, really define the tendons and make a Greek lion. So how does it look? 
It looks unique. And this is a pretty common mistake with artists, even I make it sometimes. If you try to trace something exact, sometimes you'll miss the shape that you're really going for. Like this shouldn't be round and bulbous like it's a cartoon. We can destroy some of this if you look. There's actually a slant here. And instinctively, I think your artist's brain really is trying to make a slant there. But when you copy the reference too closely, you might miss some of those gorgeous little details. Ugh, turn on. I want it curved downwards, not curved upwards. Or maybe start here. So it looks more like a foot on that side, but maybe not so much like a paw just yet. Mm, I might have to work with this. And then just release it in the BSD copy. Because you know, some things do take a little bit longer than what you can show in a video. Also, another question that you might have is why do you whistle so much into the mic? No. Why aren't feet on a separate layer? Because they are going to be viewed the same with the leg. You're going to have bones that come from the hip back. The hip back is going to be a bone. And you're probably going to have a bone here because if you look at the skeleton of real life cats, any cat species really, they have the hip bone that comes back and then forward and then back. And sometimes in animation or brigging you can't get the perfect bone representation. Like you can try. You could do one back and one forward that comes all the way down to here, like one back, one forward, one down, and you'd be copying it. But this part right here you want to move slightly separately from the rest. So it could actually end up being rigged back to the hip, forward, straight down here to this rounded part where it's going to deform. Definitely right down the middle here. And then... So that's one way of doing it. You'll have a lot more motion in the leg. But we'll see when we actually get to putting the bones in it. But that's why you don't have to do the feet separate. It's just going to deform right at the ankle, which is attached to the rest of the leg. With the tail, however, we probably won't attach this unless you just leave it static. But if you want dynamic hair, then the dynamic hair will be on a separate layer attached to the tail, and this will animate by itself. Ta-da! That makes sense. So, we'll do the back leg with just basic line art. It doesn't matter how detailed you get with it. And then make another layer. Front leg. And for the front leg, you're going to want to go all the way up and down. You want to get the whole leg in there because this whole thing is going to be moving back and forth. You will get less motion at the top than you will the bottom. The foot's going to extend the farthest. And it will also extend the heel the farthest back. But this will have a little bit of motion and it will rock back and forth. So you do need to get just the leg. Um, it's good to start with line art at the top. So you can color in the whole thing and then just delete the line art at the end. I'll show you coloring and shading and all that good stuff next. And do make another layer for the tail. Hello. Okay, there. And on the tail layer, this one will probably be challenging. It's never easy to get those perfect curves. You know what I mean? So for here, you want to stop right here so it goes just under the tail tuft and come up. This isn't going to be my final art, but just for demonstration. And then make another layer, tail tuft. 
and on this layer you want to draw your actual fur. I'd actually recommend going to image gamma size. We'll lock it here and extend the width a little bit farther so that way you can get a little bit more. And this, you know, use your imagination. It doesn't have to be exact. And it will be attached to a dynamic bone. So you can think about that with the way you make it as well. For example, if you have three little things that come down, then you'd have a bone in each one and they're all moving independently, but on the same physics if they're all one piece. So they'd all be doing the same thing, but independently at the same timing. It would actually look better to just make a tuft and just do this. So this whole thing is moving dynamically instead of the prongs. And if you put curves in it like this, it's going to look a little bit odd when it animates unless you put bones all the way down, in which case it'll move kind of like that. So I would just add a tuft to the size that you want in whatever art style you're going for. That way we can just put a few bones in it and it will wag up and down and flick based on where the tail is moving. So it'll flick down like that on its own. You won't have to animate it. Additionally, if you don't want to put a dynamic bone in the tail because it's small and you just want to control the flicks and get more out of it, you can just put a bone in there and you can make this one piece along with the tail. It's up to you. It's your art. Do what you want with it. I will release the PSD for this file when I'm done making just the base art and I'll do one explainer video for how to do the hair. That's it for this one.